available at Soft Shoe in Richmond. This time on Haunted History, we get a tour of Berea College's more supernatural locations by student Sidney Coleman. We start off at the scenic Boone Tavern Hotel, where Sidney tells us the story of a young boy whose spirit still reportedly roams the halls. One of the, I guess, most famous ghosts we have around here is Timmy, who's a little boy. And so a lot of people have either heard or they felt like a presence around of Timmy, either like running around or just kind of like laughing like little boy because when he died he died as a little boy in the hotel apparently there were some ghost hunters that came here and they like were able to sense 40 different ghosts and then they were able to sense timmy in the basement um which i thought was really interesting now whether timmy is really here i guess it would depend if you've really had interactions with timmy or not but um, I personally haven't had any, and I've been in Moon Tavern several times, but there has been people that have interacted or have felt like they seem to be um, here running in the halls, you know, being like a little kid and just kind of messing around. But that's one of the kind of ghosts that we have. I'm sure there's probably many more, um, but people kind of really talk about Timmy. Do um, guests ever say anything? Like they're in their room and they're kind of nervous? Not that I have heard. I don't think if Timmy would be, I don't, haven't heard any bad stories about Timmy, like kind of terrorizing guests, or just playing around, um, just kind of being a kid doing kid-like stuff, but not really like purposely trying to win people out of the hotel. Um, so I think he would be a friendly ghost. Do you know anything about, you said you did some history work on him, mm -hmm. do you know what happened to him, what the... He, so he got really sick. Um, what, was then, this a hotel at that time too? <laughs> yeah, so it was a hotel. So it was, I don't really know the exact timeline of when that would be, but it seemed like he got sick um, and maybe like the flu or something, and then that's how he died. Um, my guess is if it was a long time ago, medicine wasn't the best. Um, and so probably that's why, him being a young kid, and that's why he died. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're at this floor. This one? Yeah. So are there any rooms that people report any activity in or anything? Do you know? Not that I don't know. Maybe they have and I just haven't been told. Um, I honestly probably wouldn't be surprised maybe with it being such a, an old hotel. Um, like this hallway looks pretty yeah. I mean, it's a really old college, right? Like when, what's the first year that Bray College? So we were founded in 1855. So we're a very, we're old college, so. And there's been a lot of different buildings on campus that some have been torn down, so I would be surprised if maybe some. Right, and I always I thought the been... Civil War connection too. The Civil War connection is pretty cool, you know, the segregation and all mm -hmm. that. So the history is pretty interesting. Yep. The next stop on our tour is Fairchild Hall. This dorm is home to a legend involving a former female student with a tragic backstory. And so Abigail, she met a boy, she fell in love, and she got pregnant. But of course, during that time, it was out of wedlock, so that wasn't a good thing. And so the story is that she was she knew that her family wouldn't accept her if she was pregnant. Um, of course, if they left her, she would get kicked out. So that just a bunch of bad things would happen to her. And so apparently, when there's a building kind of way over there, ER, that used to be nothing but woods. And so the story goes that she went back there, and she kind of never came back. So either she probably um, committed suicide or she just killed her baby and might have killed her. And so students that live in here, there was one incident that a student reported way up in that top window in the attic that um, they saw like a flicker of a light and they could hear like a rocking chair going back and forth as if maybe she's sitting in the rocking chair kind of rocking as if she's holding her baby uh, or waiting for a baby that wouldn't come. Some students have reported kind of hearing that, hearing some odd noises upstairs because no student can go into the attic. So 
there's kind of been a little bit of questioning of why can we not go in the attic and maybe of that light flickering and maybe Abigail being up there going back to where she lived after she might feel maybe more comfortable herself. The last location Sydney shows us is Pearson's residence hall. Some residents who reside on the fourth floor claim that they can hear mysterious footsteps in the night. Hi, Pearson's, we used to have a football team. And our football team started in 1893, but then it ended in around 1907, 1909. And the story that goes with it is there's a football player on the football team, and supposedly he broke his neck during a football game. But he lived in Pearson's. And so on the fourth floor is supposedly where he used to live. When this used to be a guy's residence hall, at night you can hear just running down the halls. Now my freshman year, I lived on the third floor. And so sometimes I would actually be woken up by just running. And I was like, why are everyone being so loud upstairs? But sometimes I'd go up there and be no one at Freaked me out a little bit. Um, now whether some people might have just been playing tricks on me, I don't know but it definitely sounded like someone was running. And some of the residents on the fourth floor will say they hear running, or they'll open up their door and they'll just be like a gust of wind go by them. And there'll be no one in the hall. So um, we call him the Phantom Runner. It's kind of what his name is that everyone knows on campus. If you say the Phantom Runner, they're like, oh yeah, the guy that runs on the fourth floor in uh, Pearson's. So it's, when I first heard the story, I was like, oh, there's not someone running the fourth floor until I lived in there. <laughs> Um, and I heard it, so I don't know. It's kind of spooky, especially if it's three in the morning and you just hear running and you walk outside and there's no one. But you said people do live on the fourth floor. Mm -hmm. People live on the fourth floor. So I kind of feel bad for those individuals because <laughs> they might hear it open their yeah. door and see no one in the hall. Yeah. So I guess I was lucky living on the third floor. <laughs> For more spooky stories like this, be sure to watch the other installments of Haunted History only on WBON-TV.